welcome to another episode of Women Investing in Women. Robin and I take tremendous joy and so much heart put into this so that week after week, we feature women who have transcended their purpose and living a life of service to truly lift up other women and build a better world one woman at a time, one family at a time, one community at a time. And you may ask why, why is this important? And let's look at it through the lens of what we are gonna to do today. When women have been excluded from the economic ball game for year after year after year, for so many years, in a country like the United States where women got the opportunity to open bank accounts, have credits, financially transact, the law was passed in the mid to late 70s and the opportunity for women to financially and economically engage started only in the 80s. It's hard to fathom, but that's the reality. And so when you start that late and you didn't grow up with mothers and grandmothers who knew to do this, it's not something that is passed on. You have to learn it. Where do we go to learn it? How do we build a support system? How do we lift each other up and in the process lift ourselves up? That is truly the question of our times. When we help a woman, we truly lift up a family. And when we lift up a family, we lift up an entire community. And that is universally true. And that is how economic development in every part of the world is done by lifting up women. And today we're gonna to do a deep dive about how it is being done in a community by a not-for-profit organization and how are women being served and what can we take from that opportunity to then replicate across other communities. Take it away, Robin. All right. I am so delighted to have Ruth Garcia Corrales as our guest today from New Economics. It's New Economics for Women and the New Women's Business Center. And this is an organization that has existed for, for actually almost 40 years in Los Angeles. But I knew nothing about it until about a month ago when I attended one of their events. And it was an absolutely wonderful event. And so I contacted Ruth and said, oh, my gosh, we need to have you on our podcast. And so, Ruth, please tell us about the new economics for women. And also, I just say, I need to say, I love that acronym, N-E-W, new because it just represents so many things, a new life, a new start for women. So tell us about this new economics for women and the new women business center. Thank you, Robin and Dr. Henry for inviting us today. Uh, just to share a little bit about the everyday uh, activities and efforts we have for, for helping women and helping our community. Uh, my name is Ruth Garcia Corrales. I'm the director of the Women Business Center. It's a it's an SBA program uh, hosted at New Economics for Women, who which is a nonprofit here in Los Angeles, and it's a nonprofit that is almost forty years old, like you were saying, Robin, and uh, who that started in an area that is well known in Los Angeles as Pico Union, where it's a low low income. Uh, neighborhood. And uh, uh, four women went and said, let's do a focus group and find out what are the priorities of this community. And in all their focus group and research, what came along, people wanted housing and education. So the organization focused on those two areas since the beginning. Um, the, uh, the organization has 1,700 apartments with um, very, very specific requirements that is low income families. Because of this um, amount of, of apartment buildings, they had to build schools and they built two schools, two, two charter schools, and they have a program that is the Family Source Center. That is a program to help families all the way. That means if they need diapers, uh, if they need food, if they need parenting classes, if they need legal advice, anything those families need, they have a center where they have psychologists, case management, um, sociologists, uh, attorneys, all kind of support 
for those families. And in my world, that is the, the world of business, we are, as I explained, an SBA program that is across the United States. We're 150 women business centers that were created exactly what Dr. Henry was saying, exactly the year that women were unable to, to uh, in the time where women couldn't even have their bank accounts or their own loans, um, exactly when the law passed 35 years ago, we were celebrating last year. Uh, um, and, and the whole purpose of these women business centers across the United States is to hold the hand on women and help them thrive through entrepreneurship. That is such a beautiful journey. And thank you so much for explaining it that way. When we are doing this for women, I love the fact that you have an entire community built, right? You have housing, you have schools. So you are taking care of a woman's life cycle and her responsibilities across that life cycle in a truly meaningful and responsible way. So the question that comes to my mind, both as an educator and a businesswoman, what are you seeing as a positive outcome by integrating low-income housing with charter schools and entrepreneurship and giving that full life cycle support in a world where everybody is too quick to treat a symptom instead of give opportunity throughout that whole cycle? It's very important what you're saying because every day we learn, right? And and we have learned that poverty is institution institutionalized. That means that areas where uh, low income families live, the education is not as good. You know, the the resources are not as good. So that's what a, a new economics for women has. Uh, really make an emphasis in improving the life of this community. In our in our world of entrepreneurship, what I see is that if we support women and they find in us that connection, if they stay, they stick to us. You see it through the years the progress. We've been in in this for several years before this a uh, women business center. I was the director of another one, and they follow me, right? They came back, and you know it's so powerful the stories. Um, uh, Robin was um uh, a, a witness of it in our last uh, Black History Month event where we had one of my clients, uh, Barbara McGee, telling them that she came to my office. Um, six years ago, and I guide her through the certification process. Today, she's over, uh, she, her gross income is over $2 million. How do we make those changes? I'm not a magician. It's not that I that you come to us and we we sparkle and you you get you know the magic. It depends on the the work uh, every individual puts, the energy, the 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 dedication, the perseverance. Because doing business is not easy. It's a very hard job. But the more you you develop your skills the more you develop your your understanding and the more you handle your money correctly, the more successful you're gonna be. I'm loving this. I'm just loving everything that you're saying. And what is coming to my mind is how did you get involved with this? How have (laughs) you seen your life change? And are there some parallels between what you've seen in yourself and what you witness in the women who are coming to your center now? What a beautiful question, Robin. I'm an engineer, that's my academics. I came to the United States to serve my country, the Republic of Costa Rica. I was the Consul General for the West Coast of the United States. And when my appointment finished, the owner of the building came and said, "What what are you gonna do next? And I said, I don't know. And he said, come work for me. And I worked for him for 18 years for his company. And it's a and I wrote a book about it. It's called What It Takes from $25 to from $20 to 200 million. And it's the story of an entrepreneur that walked the streets of Los Angeles with $20 in his pocket. He bought a um, I don't know if you remember the first electronic game that was called Punk, that you connected to your TV and you played like tennis. 
So he bought one and he started selling it in the neighborhood to a 200, now it's like 900 million a business. They have 15 stores across the United States. They're mega stores. And, and I was in that retail business for, for 18 years until things um, a little bit change. And I, I kind of got to a point that it was, it was um, a new adventure that I needed. And I ended up in BEDC, that it's a, a CDFI. It's a, it was an institution that provided loans for small businesses. And I became the director of the Women Business Center. Um, BEDC shut their doors and, and we, we were laid off. And for one year, people uh, uh, play with that because we were nine months in layoff building the new B Women Business Center and the SBA opened the competition. We were 14 organizations. We came the, to the end of the four last ones and we went to a shark tank. And with all the questions and everything, we won the, 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 the opportunity to have a Women Business Center again. We opened it and as, as I say, clients follow us and, and we're here now. But this story is it's a lot of, of entrepreneurship and um, that's my world. I love to be able to support uh, people, to support others. And with my experience, I help them, you know, develop their businesses. That is such a moving story and such a joyfully uplifting story. Thank you so much for sharing that, Ruth. <laughs> you are an immigrant. I'm an immigrant. United States is built by immigrants. Somebody along Robin's ancestry immigrated to this country, right? <laughs> so we are all either directly immigrants or descendant of immigrants and celebrating that, embracing that and lifting each other up throughout our journey is a powerful testament to the power of our diversity, right? So as I am hearing you talk and you have gone from literally diplomatic service to lifting up a society one community at a time that's true how do you feel about your journey and how have you internally transformed by coming into the country for diplomatic service and now truly being a servant leader and lifting other women up and hopefully one of them is going to go on to be a diplomat for the united states right you mm -hmm. never know the magical ways life works how does it feel and how has it changed you? Well, first of all, I became a, a U.S. citizen to vote for a woman. So that, that tells me my commitment of supporting women in all, in all sizes of, of this society. And I, I believe that, that women... Um, it's interesting because I, I went to college and I had to... I have a career that is always men. And in all my, my classes, most of them were men. And I, I always said, I don't need to be in women groups. I fight to the level of any guy, right? So it's interesting how life took me. Um, I was uh, president of Los Angeles chapter for the National Association of Professional Women for many years. And, and it was there where I, find, I found a call on myself in the sense that, you know, women had, had to connect. And the more we connected, the stronger we became, how we lifted our souls, right? Because life is not easy, especially if you're an immigrant. You don't have, in my case, I didn't have family. I didn't have anybody here. So connecting with other women helped me, um, help them, and they helped me in many ways. So it's, it's that emotional support. And I think that uh, some of the reasons why uh, p uh, women do not succeed maybe in business is the lack of that support. Maybe, you know, women have to have so many hats. You have to be a mother. You have to be a wife. You have to be a caretaker. You have to take care of your home and then think, think about a business. So if you don't, if you don't have people to support you, and, and I always say we're the average of the five people around us. And if around us, all we have is, our aunt, aunt, mother, grandmother, or a neighbor, or my high school buddy, who's gonna guide me in business? Who's gonna give me the vocabulary? Who's gonna share experiences? Who's gonna be able to, to make me have a better understanding? So 
that's why this center exists and, and, and we exist pre precisely to help women that are starting a business or they have it and they want to expand it or make it even grow bigger. So we have different stages during our, our program here and that's how we help them depending on where they are in their trajectory to build their businesses. That's really beautiful. I am just so excited by everything that you're saying. And I'm wondering, what are some of the resistances uh, if you find that if you find there's resistance to women reaching out and asking for help? And then what have been some of the common challenges for women who come into your center and they're trying to move forward in their business? So there have been some, you know, getting in and then once you're in, what are some of the challenges there that they face internally or externally? Robin. When we're born, our mother tells us what to do. We go to the school, our teachers tell us what we have to do. You go to college, they tell you what to do. You get a job, they tell you what to do. So when do you build your own way of doing things when you're always waiting for somebody to tell you how to do things? So that personal journey of, of making yourself powerful, it's empowering through these programs, because sometimes we need that help. Somebody to tell us, you can do it. I trust you. I know you can do it. So I, it's interesting because they tell me sometimes, you know, I was in, in uh, I was invited to be in, in uh, Tori, uh, Tori um, Bert, what is her name? Tori, um, this famous designer that has stores, Tori Birch. She had her foundation coming to Los Angeles. They asked me to speak in a panel. And it's funny because I said, ladies, please choose who you're going to get married. Don't get married to death and make sure that whoever you marry is going to support your business because it's very hard. Business is not easy. And if you have somebody at home that tells her, no, that's not going to work. No. And Tori Birch tells her story that everybody told her that it was not going to be possible. Look at our, our number one billionaire, right, for for Spark, uh, Spanx, the same thing. Everybody told her that's not possible. So you're going to hear that a zillion times. So the only way to be to have that inside power is to have people with the same mindset that will hold your hand and give you that power to you, too. That is very, very powerful. How can our audience get a hold of you, learn more about this, and truly understand how to engage and how to be a part of this, as well as replicate this? Yes, well, I invite them to visit the Association of Women Business Centers, AWBC, because we have their uh, 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 office locator. You put your zip code and it tells you what which is your uh, women business closer to you in the United States. It, um, uh, we are, our website is www.new n e w dash w b c dot org o r g. This uh, website has all the programs. We have even videos there in the learning blocks where you can learn specific things like what is the difference between a, a fictitious name, a DBA and an LLC? What's the difference between an S corporation and a C corporation? So we have some of those videos online so people can you know, go there and, and uh, learn. We have one of social media that goes through all the different platforms of social media because that's a, a tool for marketing. So we provide a lot of information. We have uh, our Facebook that um, it's the same WBC, new WBC in Facebook. Why is important Facebook? Because uh, most, most of our classes, our webinars, everything is free in our service. Uh, we do it live on Facebook. And in Zoom, Zoom has a, um, a, um, a thing that we always have to put that we don't accept outside United States. So it, it, you're gonna be blocking Zoom. But in Facebook, we do Facebook Live and you can, just go in and, and watch the videos, learn from, from what our um, experts uh, uh, provide the training every day. And you hear from clients asking questions, which is another way to learn, right, from your peer, peers. So 
I invite everybody to join us. Thank you so very much. This has been an amazing conversation. Ruth, you have truly inspired us. And I know you have inspired our community of men and women because it's going to take all of us to come together to lift each other up because ultimately the lives we help sustain becomes our own because we live in this community. We are members of this society. And thank you so much for doing what you do, the, your team and the entire support system that makes it possible. Thank you so much for coming and sharing. And Robin, you are absolutely brilliant for finding Ruth and bringing her <laughs> into this conversation. I feel so blessed to be surrounded by so many women who are caring, giving, and sharing. And to the women out there and the men who are ardent followers of women investing in women, look around and find out ways how we can invest in each other. Because when women succeed, their children are going to be successful. When their children are successful, our children have communities to grow up in safely, securely, and build businesses and build a community and thrive. Life is never meant to be lived alone. As humans, we are creatures who are emotionally vested in relationships, and then we do everything around those relationships. So let's build a world that truly behooves us, gives us safety, gives our children safety and truly helps everybody get lifted up because happy, successful people are too busy making other people successful instead of tearing people down, right? So let's build something that is uplifting and let's truly be a part of the change and let's go invest in each other and lift each other up. <laughs>